Thank you for the introduction, Ruben. Thank you for having me here. Um, so yeah, as you all know, we all breathe out constantly CO2. But did you know that there are many microorganisms which do much more useful things than breathing out CO2? For instance, I have one here on this screen. It's a dinoflagellate. And you might know it from uh, a scenery like this on a warm summer evening when you stroll over the beach and then suddenly you find this whole wave lighting up uh, bright blue. Um, this is uh, caused by the uh, reaction of this movement of the waves and these microorganisms, they kind of communicate with each other in form of light. And since 2014, when I was graduating at the Design Academy here in Eindhoven, I've been investigating actually alternative forms of light and energy. And I started to discover in, in my research, um, also going back to uh, professors that I was working with during the, my studies at the biology, I started to discover actually how little we know about our deep seas and how much there is still to discover and also thanks actually to the, the nature documentaries like done by the BBC, how we are discovering actually how many of the sea creatures are excreting light and when we started to turn off our big lights underwater that we were actually able to see much more. For instance, this is an octopus that I started a collaboration with for my graduation back in the days. Um, and he is able to communicate in complex ways with using the light on his skin um, to attract uh, uh, prey or to divert predators or to attract another uh, octopus for mating. So our aim was to isolate these bacteria from the skin of an octopus. And in order to get this result, we actually went to the fish market and we had to buy one octopus and um, s some other uh, species that we bought and we managed with the octopus to isolate them. And so this was a celebration. But then what I noticed immediately is that to keep in a laboratory, to keep a pot like that, to keep it lit, we had to attach a pump to continuously bo 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 like bubble the oxygen through to keep them oxygenated. In reaction to the oxyge oxygen, they emit light. And I thought it's, it's a shame, you know, we finally have this natural light there and then we still have to plug it. So in my research, I started to find ways to involve uh, move, uh, movement in uh, the design. And that was inspired by a moment where I was starting also through the, through the laboratory and you turn the light on and just by the movement, these flasks with bioluminescent bacteria, they started to lit up, to light up. And that was because the oxygen, because of the movement, it was mixing. So this is a model that, uh, that you see still at the academy. Um, one of the more successful moving models in which these two heavy weights keep it moving and in the middle we try to put the liquid. I took it to the laboratory and after a first test you see like we saw a nice bright stripe of light going back and forth and based on that I created Ambio. Some of you might know it from uh, 2014. It's Maybe because the screen is a bit dark, it's you can't see it too well. But I took the symmetry out, so you have a half round weight where you put your hand and you would give it like a gentle push. And because of these heavy weights and the small point that it's leaning on, it would keep moving for quite a while. And as long as it's moving, this light was going back and forth. So. Sorry, I'm going to skip the end. So, we're going to space. <laughs> now, going from there, I was um, uh, investigating um, uh, alternative things that I could do with, with uh, microbes and energy and light. And I was very much inspired in my uh, further research by a, um, a talk that was at Mediamatic by a scientist who was working, uh, Christophe Lasseur, who was working on uh, space travel. And the interesting thing actually about space travel research is that what you're doing is actually taking a small 
ecosystem which resembles our Earth the best way possible, you're taking it out there and everything you have, you need to use. So, for instance, the, it's very not very uncommon to simply use the urine and, and other <laughs> extras that we have um, to use it as a source of energy. So, after this talk, I went uh, to Christophe Lesseur and I asked him, would it be possible to actually just make uh, objects for our own planet, which are as circular as a, in a, a, a space shuttle, to maybe work with this energy coming from urine or bacteria? And he um, coupled me to uh, the Ghent University, to Corneille Rabai. And what he showed me is actually the uh, geopactor that they are doing research in. And what you see happening here is one, um, I don't know if I can point there, yeah, is this one. It's making a small connection there to a uh, conductive surface. And what he's doing, he actually needs to get rid of electrons. Just like we need to get rid of our CO2, this organism has something very valuable. He needs to get rid of these electrons. So I thought that's super interesting, but he told me that already for the past 25 years, they've been trying to clean our wastewater streams while uh, um, um, creating energy at the same time. But it was never found profitable, eno profitable enough on a large scale. So where, you, where do you usually find these microorganisms? It's in the muddy soil of rivers and lakes. And in a laboratory, oh yeah, I want to plug a light, sure. In a laboratory, it looks like this. And now, nowadays, they mainly research these bacteria for their capability to clean water, like, for instance, oil spills at sea, or even nuclear waste. But they would never actually try to harvest this energy at this moment. So I thought, can't we make these kind of systems much more um, uh, material-friendly and uh, user-friendly so that we can actually maybe implement it in daily life. And uh, we started to make these uh, modules, which are, were much smaller um, and implementable. And this was a result after six months of work to find a way in which we could really make these super small mo modules using much less material and of course skipping a lot of the electronics that they would need for their research. And these were implementable in a uh, design that I made in 2016. Um, and here's a small video of us creating like alternative um, uh, glass forms instead of the um, reactor pods that you'd usually use. And that resulted in Spark of Life, which had four vessels um, with, these, uh, with a strong ecosystem containing these electroactive bacteria. Um, and the whole e ecosystem actually decides how well this light installation would be working. And in the center, um, you, have, you have these electrodes, and from the center you have the light shining through the, um, through the object. But the disadvantage was that actually the light was quite dim still, and it was also dimmed even more because it was in the center of the whole um, object. So I thought I have to develop this system further. And from there, I started to do light experiments to increase the amount of light, and also to enhance the um, electric electrical system that we had in there. And this was one of the light results that I of the light tests that I did. And I really liked it because it also reminded me a little bit of the um, facet eye from an insect. And I thought it would be nice to really kind of communicate this kind of living feeling of, the ob of an object. So I continued with uh, this light uh, research to implement it in my design. And this was um, presented at the beginning of this year at the Centre Pompidou um, with the light effect that I used and a much more developed and user-friendly as well uh, reactor where you could super easily feed these bacteria because that was also going forward from the bioluminescence that was very um, um, like work intensive, you'd have to replace these bacteria every day. And I didn't see like maybe a geeky person for one week doing it, but not like on a regular base. But this one 
now how I designed it, you can, through here, you can feed it just once a week with a little bit of tap water with some acetate, which is in a powder form. It resembles um, uh, vinegar, kind of. And you give it once a week and then it will stay on continuously. And I kept it on for about a year. And there comes also a question by Ruben a little bit. How can we as designers maybe also have an influence on scientists? Um, it was really funny that when I wanted to first present this, um, this type of work, that the scientists, when I, I decoupled it from their laboratory, they told me, yeah, I, I, I think you will manage for one week to keep it alive. And then actually I kept it alive for a whole year. And it was only because I was ha getting a baby to nurture that I was forgetting to nurture this one and it died. Um, so I think actually going from there that this was a uh, system that would maybe in the future be possible to really um, have it at home. If you can keep a plant alive, I thought you could keep this light installation alive. And um, also this year what I did was uh, for the Uro Festival at the Schelling, was to try and find um, these ecosystems I was talking about, the, um, to find my own samples and to um, compare them with each other and see which places we could find strong ones. And so at the island we took uh, numerous uh, uh, mud samples and um, like for surprisingly enough, we the, the, the most successful sample that we found was at a second World War uh, bomb crater. Um, this is a super strong sample that I'm, sample that I'm also now uh, showing at the ICSI Expo exhibition. Um, the funny thing that we kind of figured out, like going back from why maybe is this a good place, is that probably because it was closed off and it, there's not a, like a, a river or anything attached, so it has to be in itself quite a strong circular ecosystem there. Um, so. For the Uro Festival, I continued to well with the, with these samples and testing them. I think there's a small video in the middle of the Bomagat. Um, um, it's called. Um, I continued to create a, a design to communicate the fact that we could find these organisms there. Uh, and I always try to enhance the amount of light to really like um, show effect in the most nice way. Uh, let me skip. Oh, sorry. It's going too fast. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I had to go in there to uh, uh, install the battery in the mud. Um, and so I, I created Mudwell and this is the pictures of the installation. Um, so if you would walk by it and you look inside, you could see this uh, light effect which was created by only one LED which was powered by one battery in the bacteria battery in the mud. Um, but theor theoretically, of course, you could have put the whole pond full of uh, these bacteria batteries um, with people suggesting me to power your Christmas tree with it or like very great design ideas came up. Um, and you also had some samples that you could test yourself for how good they were working. And it was busy, quite busy. <laughs> so as a last thing that I want to like quickly introduce you to uh, that I'm working on right now is a project for, uh, it's a slot lab project at Slot Schaasberg. It's uh, in the south of the Netherlands, um, in uh, Landgraaf near um, uh, Heerle, Maastricht. And what we're actually working on here is with four uh, designers, two architects and two product designers. We're trying to see if we can find a circular uh, a way to rebuild this old ruin. Um, um, I was asked to focus on the light aspect. So, of course, I started by taking samples from the moat, the Slotgracht. Um, and now I already had some first results um, where uh, Actually, we're being able to get some light from it. It's not too strong yet, but also the um, uh, sample, we can maybe train it a little bit to function the best way possible. 
Um, so for my design, I'm uh, focusing on uh, my inspiration on the oil lamp, which has actually quite some resem resembling uh, things as my uh, installations with a, a liquid reservoir and the separate light object and also the, the airflow that needs to be there in the old oil lamp is also uh, very much needed for the bacteria. And so also these middle age, really old, uh, simple oil lamps have my inspiration and I'm just going to give you a very quick sneak peek of a sketch design that I'm currently working on. Um, and then if you want to learn more about it this week, um, at the ICSI Expo I'm presenting this Lot Schaasberg uh, work in progress. And uh, around the corner at the Campina Terrain I'm doing a, a completely different, not bio-related project about water circularity. And then, like um, William Meyer said, in the Netherlands, quite close by, the Cube Design Museum is a fantastic biodesign um, um, exhibition going on right now. So yeah, hopefully in the future, um, you'll have to ask your neighbors to feed your lamp when you go on holidays. 